my next guest right out of here. He's one of the most popular stand-up comedians in the United States. His last three movies have all occupied the number one slot at the US box office. I, I love his movies. Here he is. He's the very funny Mr Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that these couches weren't too tall. No. no. <laughs> I didn't want my feet to be swinging. So well, like, right. well let, let, me, let me get with the, get that out of the way, then, because you're not the tallest guest we have on the show this well, evening. No, I mean, look, I call it petite. I'm a petite individual. Yeah. But I'm confident. Yeah, yeah. I'm very confident. You hear my voice? That makes up for my size. Yeah. I'm very confident. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, do you think... Uh, do, do people... Quite how to put this, but I, I like a small man. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does that make sense to you? No, it doesn't. Well, no, I, no, no. Some of my friends are small guys, and I, they, I, they kind of bring a different kind of energy yeah. into any gathering I've noticed. We're good people. I mean, I think that's the best way. Wait, first of all, why are we talking like, <laughs> like small people are a different type of people? Right? <laughs> but I notice you're not, oh, I mean, because you're a fit guy, clearly. Very and I know fit. You're in the. <laughs> Very fit. Well, <laughs> that's all. I want to make sure we get that well, out of the way. Very fit. Well, in Hollywood, you have to be. You have to be, don't you? Yeah, you, you yeah. don't have to be. Yeah. I consider myself very fit. OK. I'm what you call a sex symbol. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, you mean, so you're what you call a sex symbol, but with the inverted yeah. commas? <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to do that just in case somebody wanted to question it. Oh, I did this. OK. okay. okay. I, did, I gave you this. I love your stand-up comedy. I Thank love your you. movies as well. We'll talk about your new movie and movie career, but uh, you came over in 2012 and you sold out the O2. Yes, I did. Here in London. Yes, I you did. You sold out Wembley in 2014. Yes, I did. Uh, and I noticed that, in common with some other stand-up comedians, you talk a lot about your, your personal life, about growing up, yes. about your family now. Uh, and in particular, I was wondering, you know, the... Uh, the childhood you had mm -hmm. struck me as being a difficult childhood, as yeah. a, a tough childhood. Not, you know what, not difficult to the point where I didn't have. It's, it's, I, what my surroundings were is what I was used to. You know, that's all I knew. So, uh, I think growing up, my mom, uh, I was raised by a single mother. Dad was on drugs, in and out of jail, not around too much. But my mom made sure that me and my brother had. What, my, was, your dad, what was the drugs your dad had the problem with? Uh, name one. He did them all. Yeah, well, uh, you were, angry about uh, it. were you angry with him? No, man, I don't care. I'm black. We don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> You don't care. You shrug your shoulders. I don't... It's, it's not something that I cry. <laughs> what was Dad doing? No. My dad's fine now. When I got to a point where I could afford to do it, I got my dad help, put him in an uh, institution where, you know, it was 24-hour care, and now my dad's sober. And That's now my dad... Basically, here's how I see it. My dad was supposed to do drugs so I could see what not to do. Does that make sense? Well, I can see where you're going with that. So you had a kind of very negative example put right in front I of you. A, I had a Let's point blank that. view yeah, of yeah. what drugs can do to an individual. Yeah. You're a father yourself now, because you've got two children? I am. Two kids. Well, me. let me ask you this thing, because you do swear a lot on stage. I, I do. I but funny. I get away with it. It's like yeah. it's, my voice is small oh, enough yeah. to where it's not offensive. Yeah, well... <laughs> Uh, I've used that excuse as well. It doesn't always work. No, because you're tall. <laughs> you can't do the same thing. Is that what it is? Watch this. Come on, man. Stop being a bitch. Okay, Look at that. See that? Small. Okay. Come on, don't be a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I say, like, you don't be a bitch. Whoa, what? hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? Okay, it's yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although, who's going to be scared of this? Uh, but I know, but your mum, and I don't know how much it's true, I get the feeling she was pretty down on you swearing. Yes, you yes. My mom is very much into church, very religious. And, you know, my mom never came to see me perform. My mom has never... She passed away uh, six, six and a half years ago. My mom has never seen me perform. And the reason why my mom never wanted to come to a show is because of the swearing, of the alcohol, of smoking the air. She just so didn't want to be around the whole environment, me. not just your performance. Just the environment. The whole, yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do with just me, just the environment yeah, yeah. in general. Real old school church she felt, going, yeah, yeah, it wasn't conducive to what she wanted to be around. When you were a kid, though, did she ever let you swear? Were there times when you were allowed no. to use the curse word? No, my mom was so strict. So strict. Yeah, yeah. So strict. My mom, my mom beat me one time. My mom was the mom that whatever was near her is what she beat me with. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got beat with a lampshade 
shade. It didn't even hurt. It didn't even hurt. And the fact that she felt that that, that that was a weapon at the time, like she grabbed my arm until she found something, and <laughs> grabbed the lampshade. I just remember looking at her like, this don't hurt, but you're messing up the lampshade. I got <laughs> She was weak. My mom was not strong. None of the whoopings hurt, so I just had to act like it hurt. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Stop, please don't. Oh, you're hurting me. This isn't good. <laughs> I bet she knew you if I could. She didn't really want to hurt you. That's no, what's going on. She needs to get out of breath. Yeah. You are going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Kevin has a new movie out. It's The Wedding Ringer, and it comes on the 20th of February. Yes, sir. Okay, now this is this is uh, got a great concept, a great premise behind this. Explain to us the story, because I can see what attracted you. Uh, what, what's the deal with The Wedding this, Ringer? This is my first rated R comedy. It's a movie about a guy, uh, Josh Gad, who plays a character named Doug. Doug has basically lied himself into a corner. Uh, Doug is getting married, and he's told his wife that he has a best man, and he also has groomsmen. He's a couple days away from the wedding, and his wife is pressuring him to get these people to come to the meetings. Yeah. With his back against the wall, he doesn't know what else to do because these people don't exist. He's forced to come to a guy like myself. I play a guy named Jimmy Callahan. I provide a business for those who lack friends. Uh, whatever you need, I can provide it for the right price. He needs a best man, no problem, I can do it. He also needs seven groomsmen. I've never done this. This is called a golden tux. He <laughs> offers me a certain amount of money that makes me say, you know what, I can do it, don't worry about it. Yeah. This movie is about these two guys trying to bring this lie to reality. It's about the road to friendship between these two guys it's and a, trying to create bromance. this. It's a bromance. Yeah. And trying to create this lie. But the fun and silliness and the edgy humor that we really take on in this movie along <laughs> the way is unbelievable. I think this is my best work to date. Wait, take some chances, for sure. There's a few scenes you think, wow, I'm amazed they got away with that. Yo. I'm thinking of the scene with the dog. Oh, yeah, no, there's a, there's a scene with the dog. There's a scene with the dog where, uh, without giving up the movie, I can... Uh, how do we talk about this scene? Well, I, I can talk about it without saying too much. Uh, there's a bachelor party that I throw for uh, Doug, and... Uh, Doug, we want to do something wild for him because he's a guy, he's a prude, hasn't done much. So we have a dog, and we decide to blindfold Doug and put peanut butter on Doug's area, okay? And we say, okay, we're going to give you a gift, and we tie him up, and we get the dog to come in and start licking the peanut butter off his area, and he thinks it's a girl, and we unfold it, and he sees that it's a dog. The dog then panics, bites down on the area. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a crazy situation because now we got to get it I don't see how that could become a crazy situation. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, what was crazy was on the day, the dog didn't want to walk to the, the, the area where, where he had to do the business. So... Honey, he didn't was, really do the business. There was, no, it was, it was a prosthetic. Oh. But there was a guy whose job was to, like, hold the prosthetic and get the dog. <laughs> So, like, in between takes, you see this guy, like, come on, man, he's got, like, he's got the thing, like, near his forehead, talking to the dog. And everybody's just looking, like, this can't be good. Like, Did you? if the dog had a voice, the dog was like, I swear this is the last time that I'm taking, that I'm taking any gigs like this. I'm, no more gigs like this, I told my agent. So the speeches, have you been... I imagine you would be a dream person to be best man, Stephen. Well, yeah, I was um, best man for my colleague, Hugh Laurie, and uh, for my brother. That was, that was bad, because um, I had an asthma attack. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> That's not the ideal place to be, is it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll that for the sequel. <laughs> uh, uh, but... As uh, many asthmatics will know, one of the things, if you do get serious asthma, that you're encouraged to do is have an adrenaline uh, syringe uh, about your, you know, in your car glove compartment or somewhere similar, and just, because it's intramuscular, you just give yourself a stab. And, of course, the fear of having to make a speech is a great surge of adrenaline. So I, I did get through it, but it was... Wow. It was there was a time when I, I was just <laughs> outside the tent <laughs> thinking... I was sinking to the ground, wheezing, unable to breathe, thinking, how do I get, this, <laughs> get my words of love out to my brother? <laughs> if you're the bride, you are pissed <laughs> on my day. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna almost die on my day. You know the best man to stop the speech and get out a syringe and inject oh. himself. <laughs> 
so the movie's out. What's next for you? What's the next film on your agenda? Because I get the feeling you're someone who plans his career oh, fairly man. thoroughly. I'm, I'm, I'm booked right now until 2018. Wow. Uh, this comes out February 20th. Um, after this, I have a movie coming out with Will Ferrell and myself called Get Hard. Will Ferrell? Hold it, uh, Get Hard? Yeah, Get Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, so what's uh, the what's the what's the we're fascinated by this movie now? What uh, happens in Get Hard? Well, it's definitely not what you think it is. Yeah, well. uh, <laughs> it's a movie. It's a movie about an upscale uh, rich guy played by Will Ferrell, who's basically uh, been falsely accused of embezzlement and is going to jail. Uh, I've been working in the basement of his corporation for years. I have a car washing business. And he assumes, because of my color, that I know what jail is like and offers me money uh, to teach him. And because he's being such a jerk, I come up with a crazy amount of money that, that I'll take if, if, if he's willing to pay that I'll teach him. And it's about me really teaching this guy what prison is like. I'm getting him hard for prison, but I'm making this world up uh, because, of, because of me being stereotyped. You've never been in jail? Never been in jail at all. But <laughs> well, it's... Uh, it's a good title. I've got a script, if you want to look at it, you can, called Anal Witness. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, you're very welcome to have it all. Yeah. Might be your next project, I don't know. It's... No, no, uh, that, that's one of the ones that I would stay away from, oh, just, okay. just because. I think yeah. it's too late. I think Fletcher the dog's already got that <laughs> <part>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, I'm so thrilled you came on the show. I'm oh, genuinely I'm a big happy, fan. Man. Even bigger fan now you've been on. Kevin, you're going to stay with us? Yes, I'll stay, Kevin man. Hart, ladies and gentlemen, is going to stay with us.